Hey guys, it's your girl Booney, and you're listening to episode 80 of the Booney Breakdown Podcast. The podcast where we sometimes cry, we always laugh, we might get a bit ratchet, but forever gonna break it down. Your source of all things responsible and ratchet. Surprise, bitches! <laughs> You weren't expecting an episode to be in your podcast app this Monday, but surprise, I love you. I do. I do want to apologize for how uh, season four ended there a little bit. It was a little rocky. I told you guys my original intention was to have the last episode be launched uh, October 29th, right before the live show. I was talked into adding some more episodes for November. I just did not get around to it because I just I build my schedule around how I record, when I release, when the live show was. So in my mind, it was like, okay, episode done, live show Friday. I'm good. I'll see y'all in January. And it just didn't work out. Um, I know a few of you have messaged, DM'd me, emailed me asking about the audio from the live show i did record this one and my intention was to do some type of release um i know personally as a someone who listens to podcasts i do not enjoy listening to the live show recordings because it's just odd you don't know what's happening in the audience you can't see but i had found a way um in which i was going to share some of the audio but i just could not um get the sound quality good enough there was a technical issue with the recording booth um and i'd even outsourced it and it just it i I just can't release super terrible bad audio so there was uh no audio from the live show but we had an amazing time it seemed like i mean it really seems like months ago but it was really only about a month ago it was awesome. I have listened to you and I really am um, looking at cities to take the show to um, in 2019. So, of course, it will probably be starting on the East Coast. It looks like Philly is going to be the first stop. So as soon as I get details, of course, I will let you guys know. But let's hop into Booney's Pick of the Week. Uh, this is my favorite time of year. It's SAG season, bitches. It's our time. My birthday is coming. And you have the holidays, my favorite holiday, which is Christmas. So I love this time of year. Um, I'm going to put up my real tree. Yes, a real tree. We don't do fake trees around this bitch, okay? You know, I love the smell of a pine of a real tree. It's just something about going out and picking the tree. It's just like a whole tradition. I like it. I love it. I do it, right? I just can't do a fake tree. I won't do it. The only way I would do a fake tree is if I had a house, like a big enough house, where I could have multiple trees. And in that case, I would do like a real tree in like the foyer or wherever the main tree will be. And in another part of the house, I might do um, like a fake tree just to have two trees. But my house not big enough for all that right now. So in, in my dreams, in my dreams, right? Also, I want to hop in to let you guys know what this episode is about. You're probably listening like, what the fuck is Booney going to talk about? And if you follow me on Instagram, and I mentioned this as one of my pick of the weeks in a previous episode, I did a, a girl's trip to kick off my birthday for my 34th birthday. And we went to Amsterdam and did a little quick jaunt in Iceland. And uh, we did some audio diaries along this trip (laughs) and so that is today's episode recapping um recapping our our daily adventures um for the trip and so i'm excited to share those with you guys that is the episode um you might you know some people who went on the trip you're familiar with um Sheikah who's on the podcast frequently and also I think back all the way back at episode 12 um Ashley from Will Drink for Travel she's also went on the trip and then three of my other friends and we had a fucking blast and you're going to enjoy it by listening to it this episode all right so real quick let's hop into some housekeeping before we shoot over into the meat of the episode uh housekeeping So as you guys know, you are ready, you're waiting. Season five of the Booney Breakdown podcast 
will be launching new episodes January 21st, 2019. Okay. So this is like a little bonus episode, but the official season five, January 21st, 2019. Mark your calendars. Tell a friend. I've already started recording some of the interviews for this season. I have quite a bit scheduled for the remainder of December to record. And so I'm really excited about the content on this one. Again, you still have time. If there's someone you want me to interview, a topic you want me to talk about on season five, shoot it over. Send me an email, thebooniebreakdown at gmail.com. You can DM me on Instagram at thebooniebreakdown. You can go to thebooniebreakdown.com on the contact page and shoot me a message that way. So many ways you can get in touch with me, but I am still plotting out a few more episodes. Um, So yeah, let me know what you want me to talk about. Also, because I did not have a chance to say this on a podcast episode, at the live show, we dropped some new merch, okay? And I am so, like, you guys have really responded really well to this one shirt. We have two new shirts. Uh, one is, like, hella responsible, hella ratchet. And the one that I like, like, is my fave. I actually have the sweatshirt on right now as I'm recording. Sort of, kind of, sophista, hella ratchet as fuck, right? That shirt is really a popular one. So if you were interested and you did not come to the live show, you don't follow me on social, you just listen to the podcast, you did not know that there was some new merch, you can have on over to the booniebreakdown.com backslash shop and scoop up that shit, okay? <laughs> Makes a good gift for the holidays. Or you could just treat yourself and be like, you know what? This is one of my favorite podcasts. I am going to support Booney and her student loan payments. <laughs> so serious um but yeah head on over to the booniebreakdown.com backslash shop and scoop up your merch and as always uh you can follow us on instagram and facebook the boonie breakdown you can follow us on twitter just the boonie breakdown and when sharing this episode on all of your social media use the hashtag the boonie breakdown or hashtag pod n p o d i n um, I love searching the hashtag on, especially on Twitter, um, and engaging in conversations with you about the episode. I try to respond, but again, again, if your page is locked, even if you use these hashtags and tag me, I cannot see them. So either unlock your page or shoot me an email or a DM if you want to give your feedback that way. I still greatly appreciate it. Also, if you have yet to do so, hop on over to Apple Podcasts if you listen on the purple app on your iPhone, iPad, whatever, and leave me a review there, okay? Two seconds to do it. Type it, hit those five stars, and I would love you long time for it. So that is it for me. So let's get ready to break it down. All right, guys, this is a story of six friends who board an international flight and head to Amsterdam to celebrate their girl's 34th birthday. (laughs) But seriously, um, all of my friends are turning 35 next year, and I had already claimed in my mind that my 35th birthday trip was going to be a boo trip. Um, and I love my bitches. I love my hoes, but I want to take some penis on vacation for my birthday. And so I figured I would get the jump on all the 35th birthday celebrations and go away for my 34th birthday. Right. Oh, well, sag season. And, uh, my friends are amazing. At first we were trying to, I wanted to go to Amsterdam. I've been putting it on my vision board for like the past three years. And I just have not like gotten around to getting there. But I still like like going away to warm places. And at first, the plan was like, oh, let's go to Turks and Caicos. We have found the flight, but trying to find some accommodations and what we wanted, just that didn't work out. So I was being taunted by Iceland Air um, advertisements across the internet, on the metro. And it was just like, okay, let me look at this because I keep seeing these ads everywhere. And the airfare turned out to not be bad at all. Shot the email out like, fuck that. All right, let's go to Amsterdam. And we booked this trip back in June or July, I believe. And I had five incredible women um, who decided to go with me. And I asked them once we landed 
I was like, you know what I really want you guys to do? I would love for you guys to send me like each night after we do whatever or like while something really cool is happening to do a voice memo. And let's kind of document this because I'm going to do an episode if it turns out to be cool. And because these five women are so fucking amazing, they agreed. They obliged and they recorded these memos. And so without further ado, day one of Amsterdam hoes. Day one. It is 5 p.m. I don't know the name of the street, but we're on some canal in Amsterdam. And we just got high on the streets of Amsterdam. Sheikha, I'm watching her right now, pose for Instagram with a blunt and the canal and the smoke. Half the group has partaken. Half the group has not. I'm going to have to talk my friend into not jumping into the canal because I will not be going in to get her as you hear her laugh in the background. This water looks cold and it looks dirty. And I shall not jump in. I don't how like how easy can you commandeer the boat? I don't know. No, I, am I recording you recording me? I did record her. <laughs> so after we did our first experience with a coffee shop and saw the canals and the gorgeous homes or whatever, uh, we went to dinner at this bomb ass Italian place, which was really, really authentic. You know, Italy is one of my favorite spots, and the pasta was uh, it was just so delicious, so great. Um, after dinner, we ventured into the red light district, and it was amazing to um just walk down the street and see these women. Um, and thongs and bras soliciting men in the window. And when I saw the very first red light of the district, I got so excited. But it was just such a fascinating place that left us with many questions. How often do they get tested? I don't know. How many people do they sleep with in one night? I assume because this is like the thing, they have to use condoms. I don't, I don't know. Literally, we walked by a window, and I think I was taken aback because we saw a lot of red curtains, which means they were actually in a transaction. And then we walked by some, and there was just a, w- a woman in the window. And when you look in her room, it's a pump, a hand sanitizer, paper towels, and a bed. And they, like, what? And do you what pay you extra if fuck? you want to go raw? Like, but do you pay you extra? What if you don't fuck? What if they give you, like, hand jobs? And I'm then, sure and then, if you go raw... Are they on prep? Are they? I just have so many questions. I think they may give you hand jobs or simulate blow jobs with the hand jobs. The amount of educational questions that are needed for this session of the program is out of control. Y'all are thinking way too hard. Fear your thoughts on the red light district. I just want to know, is the temperature regulated in the room? I want like, to know they in this particular window, since there are two girls, so you get, get two girls at the same time. It's quite fascinating, and we're excited about it. I want to see somebody go. Do they have a menu of services? Like $20 for a hand job, $30 for... Booney is actually considering going into one of these. Do you want to see how much that very friendly. Editor's note, Booney did not go inside one of the red light specials. Um, I just would like to know uh, what happens like in the red light district when this woman is standing in the in the window. Like what happens when her mom walks by or like a family member or her pastor? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and then I would also like to know about the vagina, bana- banana and the vagina thing. It just really doesn't sound hygienic. I mean, the sugar from the banana mixing with the bacteria in your veg just seems like a terrible combination. And I think that's all of my thoughts so far. So it was also funny because the moment we saw the very first red light of the district, um, Ashley goes, oh, my God, I'm not mature enough for this. 
this. <laughs> and so before we actually like walked around and explored, etc., we went into some bars and did like lots of shots. And we were in the bar, of course, the one bar we go into, they actually had like a deal. It was like five shots for like 10 euro or something. And so we were doing shots of Tito's and these black guys are in there and they see us and they're being fresh or whatever. And um, they end up like they offered to buy us all shots for my birthday. And so the bartender is like pouring them and he's pouring absolute. And we're like, no, no, we're not going to drink absolute. Like we need Tito's. And so the bartender like pours the shots back into the bottle and then proceeds to pour us five shots of Tito's. Um, and then we took the shots and we were like, okay, bye. Like, <laughs> I know those guys are like, these bitches. <laughs> Day one, host in Amsterdam, hashtag Amsterdam host. First impressions of Amsterdam. Let's see. Red lights. The red light district was definitely an experience for the first time. It's very fascinating. We have lots of questions. We plan on getting them answered. But it's a very interesting situation. Um, so yeah, I would say day one is red lights and long flights. We had our nice little long flight in, which was fine. Um, but of course, we're tired. So day one was pretty much just, you know, figuring things out, trying to get Things organized for like dinner and such. Eating the food at the Marriott Hotel was bomb. I know I was hungry, but it was really good. Then, you know, kind of taking it easy, walking around, seeing what we can see. Dinner was good at the little Italian spot. But the highlight was definitely the red light district. And my highlight from the red light district was definitely finally seeing a guy walk behind the closed curtain and go in the back with the girl. Very fascinating. I'm also fascinated by the fact that a lot of the girls wear glasses. Don't ask me why, but I am intrigued by it. Amsterdam is a cool little city, very metropolitan. I love that it's on a canal. Um, although I have a fear of one of us falling into the canal, I love that it's on the canal. Um, yeah, so... I think that's it. Signing off for now. Stay tuned for day two. Peace. Editor's note, no one fell into a canal. Also, we learned that 20 to 25 people per year fall into the canals and drown because they're either too high or too drunk. Day two. Shopping. Partying. Drinking. More weed. Let's get into these tapes. Amsterdam, day two. It started out so promising. We had a nice brunch. We went shopping. We came back. We had a lovely dinner. And then the night just went fucking downhill from there. I don't know what kind of weed Chica gave Adrian, but it was not nice. She took the most crackheadish picture and she looked like she had a stroke and she sent it to Kenny and then we had shots of absinthe, at, what's it called Jade? Absinthe? Absinthe and then I, my mouth went numb and I drooled in my own hair I don't, I don't, yeah I don't, I don't know what else to say and Crystal snoring yeah. and Oh, she was just up. Okay. Good night. So, oh, this is cool. The voice memo shit is in Dutch because mm -hmm. I'm in Amsterdam and, you know, I like it. I kind of love it. I don't love absinthe. We had absinthe and oh, be right where I needed to be it was like, and Ashley loves it. Ashley loves absinthe. I mean, I think absinthe and weed is like a weird combination. Like you feel a little tingly. I felt too tingly at first, but then it mellowed out. We're in the bed. Do not try to party out here because it's weird. 
the nightlife was weird, but we found something to make it work. People cried. I didn't cry, even though I'm a cancer. I didn't fucking cry. Ha <laughs> ha Um, I'm in the bed. <laughs> I am t- Adrian took the craziest looking picture I've ever seen in my life today. It was the best thing. I think everybody left for like twenty minutes. Adrian yeah, cried. I I put it on the like, Adrian what? that's how you know Adrian was hot because she wasn't even upset with it. She was like, Let me know if you're gonna put it on there and like ta- like tag me when you put it on it. Like I'm gonna put it on the whole It was so bizarre. I was like, no one's going to see you looking like this. What kind of friends would we be if we let the whole worldwide, Al Gore's internet, if we let Al Gore's internet see her looking like that? Bless her heart. It was amazing. Good night, Moon. (laughs) Day two of Amsterdam Host. I would call this day Lifestyles of the Rich and Ratchet. While we got to experience elements of true wealth, such as having champs in Chanel and eating king crab leg the size of your actual leg, we also took a turn somewhere around, oh, 1 a.m., I'm pretty sure things went left when we had absinthe. Mind you, I am still and always will be the reigning champ of not getting inebriated. However, everybody else took a turn. While it was entertaining, I began to think maybe I was, in fact, drunk because things went... (laughs) So terribly, terribly far to the left. All in all, it was fun. We had laughs. We had a few cries. But everybody survived. The highlight of today, I must say, has to be the absolutely horrible, terrible, no good, very bad picture that Adrian took of herself and sent to her best friend, none other than KG. Oh, also, the nightlife in Amsterdam is very interesting. You're either really young and really trashed or really old and probably at home Netflixing and chilling. That is it. Stay tuned for day three. So I took a picture because I wanted to send it to Kitty. You guys know Kitty. And everyone laughed at me for 20 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> until they cried. And you guys, I have said that my biggest fear in life is becoming a meme on the internet. And Ashley made me a meme. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny, actually. <laughs> my face, I was so fried. And after that, like, shout out to Rondell of the Soul Society because he left us a little package after we ran into him. And the package was so strong. And then Ashley gave me a nightcap of absinthe. And (laughs) (laughs) the part where my brain meets my spine was tingling. (laughs) That's the part. The nape of your neck. It was just tingling. It's a corridor. It's one of the cortexes. Yeah. And and we watched watched Fee drool in her weave. (laughs) After she took the shot, she just drooled. And then we got in the car, and I held Jade in my bosom like Elonia Van Sant does. Oh yes, yes. mammy titties as <laughs> well. And we got a good release. We got a good release. It is now 4 a.m., and we're laying here How did we do 4 a.m.? trying to go to bed. As you can see, day two, (laughs) the absinthe was the star of the night. 
I kind of laughed because uh, Jay and Fee kept calling it like abstinence. <laughs> we had shots of abstinence. And if you uh, looked at my Insta stories from that night, like they kept saying abstinence, not absinthe, which was to- like so great. Um, also, uh, the the we went to like a seafood place. The seafood bar was really nice. It gave you like Miami vibes a little bit, like South Beach. But they had a king crab that was the size of a puppy. Um, this thing was huge. The crab leg, uh, we did not order it originally, but it just showed up. And so we ate it and uh, yeah, it took Fee and Ashley like quite some time to crack it and eat open all of that sweet, delicious meat. But the thing was fucking huge. Like I, I've never seen anything, um, a crab that big in my life. It was just really redonkulous. And um, in each of those memos from day two, it was the infamous picture um i have no idea i think i just randomly was just like texting kenny about something i don't even know what i can't remember and this was i think pre the shot of absinthe so i really can't even blame it on that um and (laughs) kenny texts back like oh my god you are so fried and i don't know what made me but i showed them all the picture and we literally laughed until we were all like crying like i was hyperventilating crying and then ashley made the funniest meme and i really thought they were going to share it on the internet i don't know why but i'm so happy that they did not and like shika said like mixing the weed i think with the absinthe that was giving us the tingling sensation it was uh, i the night just went downhill and uh but it wasn't like a tragic downhill i thought it was still a pretty funny downhill because the next morning we still had more fucking laughs okay so let's move into day three um on day three we totally set it up where we went to a blacks in amsterdam tour which was you know it was okay and then you you know you know what day three just the whole day just did not go the way we thought it was going to go as well but memories so day three it's day three in amsterdam today we did the blacks in amsterdam tour it was okay then we ate thai food tonight we are going out to party no one believes me, but I am not going to drink anything tonight. So this is me making an actual recording that I am not going to have any cocktails for the night. And I'm just going to record everyone else. Last night, I drank something called absence. And it was really crazy. So this is why I'm making the conscious decision not to drink while I'm here tonight in Amsterdam. So my day four recording will let you all know that I didn't drink anything. Signing off, Jade Nicole, Charm City Pretty. So tonight we had no real plans and ended up doing so much and had like a really fun night. Those are the best nights. It really was. We went to the W and just had like a lot of drinks and started shots. And then we wandered to a bar. Huh? And I don't have a voice. Sheikah doesn't have a voice. And then we went to the bar and it was closed because the recommendations from people here about clubbing were kind of whack. And then we just were in a little square and found a club playing music and went in and got fucked up and had a good time. It was a really great night. And we said, fuck you, Kanye. We said, fuck Fuck you, you, Sheryl Sandberg. And you, Sheryl. Fuck you, Lenin. Fuck Fuck George Bush. I root for everybody black who about the black shit. And that's what you got it. And then then we just had some room service pizza and Pepsis. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. And this shit and was good. It's 4'11. That's my height. It's oh, four eleven. So happy birthday, Sheika. No, it's her height. <laughs> and that is day three. We also did a Blacks in Amsterdam tour, and we've heard good things about it. But I feel like it was just one of those businesses where the person who owned it, the lady Jennifer, has to do it to get the results that everyone talked about yeah. like our guy was okay it was but it just the the experience just lacked some things and it was boring yeah it wasn't engaging i don't know what i was expecting out of it but it wasn't that and so that was kind of a letdown because we were really looking forward to it's not that it wasn't engaging here's the thing because I feel like I've done, I did this tour and then I did Blacks in London tour and it left me feeling the same way. And I, I feel like actually today is the first day that I've been able to articulate it. And it's because who I am is so entrenched in the history of the United States. And because that is, and because I am who I am, who my mother is, who she is, who my grandparent, my grandparents are, who they are and were, it makes it difficult for me to sort of uh, it makes it difficult for me to sort of go to other countries where slavery didn't exist. It makes it hard for me to go to countries where black people have a route to another country. And, you know, we encounter some today who said, oh, we're from another country, but we experience this here. And but I recognize myself as being something not as you. being something as being a, a citizen of a different country, the country where I am from. And I just feel like it's not fair because as black Americans, we don't have that option. We don't have the option to say I'm from Ghana. I'm from I'm from America, <laughs> but my roots are in Ghana. Ghana. We don't have that option. And I think because we have never had that option, we have had to create our own culture. And I think because we have had to create our own culture and because we have the roots and the beginnings of what we have. It makes it difficult for me to, and I may get backlash. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to say it anyway. It makes it difficult for me to sort of, I I empathize, but I don't sympathize. I, we, I get you. I, we are, we're black. We are in the same struggle across the world. But if you want me to feel sorry for you, I can't do it. I'm not, I can't do it. And it's because black Americans, we, I, I'm not going to say we had it worse. I understand <laughs> that there was slavery around the world. I do. I've been around the world. I understand it. But. We were the last stop on the transatlantic slave trade. And I just feel that the slavery that existed in the Americas is different than slavery that existed other places around the world. And I feel like my ancestors and those ancestors of my fellow black Americans, we are just the most amazing and resilient people because we had it the worst and we made it and we are the strongest. Like, I'm just going to say it. And uh, that's what I fucking want to say. And that's that. <laughs> so, yes, after a night of drinking and partying and shots and a tour of blacks in Amsterdam, we came home and ate pizzas and drank Pepsis from room service and debated slavery and had a struggle war. <laughs> and as you can tell, Ashley was passionate and very serious about her thoughts um, of the diaspora and it was a very interesting tour because 
it was like seven black American women and about seven um, black Dutch people, but they were from Suriname. Um, That's where their family was from. And so that's what we were saying when they can trace back to like, there are people left Africa, went to Suriname and ended up in the Netherlands. And most black Americans can't do that easy of pinpointing. Um, So yes, that was day three um so yeah it was it it seems like a bit of the tour became this discussion between black america and dutch black people um about who was more woke and who had more organizations for the struggle it was just it was a very interesting dynamic on the on the tour but yeah you know i can't say that i would tell you based off of my experience to spend the money to take that tour but one bomb ass thing about day three was after the tour, we were fucking starving because we were out to like four or five in the morning or whatever the fuck we just said. And we had to get up to go to this tour and we did not eat and we were starving when it was done. But shout out again to Rondell of the Soul Society. He told us to go to Bird's Thai. And it was the best Thai food I've ever had in my life. It was good. Like days later, we were still talking about the Thai food. Like it, it was fucking incredible. So if you go, go to Bert's Thai. I know you're thinking the Netherlands Thai, but it was the best Thai food I've ever had. And um, as you can tell, I just got really excited about it. And I wish I could get a plate right this moment okay so moving on from one struggle to the other struggle day four we went to the Anne frank house and let me say this this is a tip um if you're going to amsterdam and you're going to do the Anne frank house book your ticket in advance (laughs) they sell out like weeks in advance and they at 10 o'clock every day they release about 20 percent of the tickets for the day and so uh, we did not get any luck the previous days, but we realized what they did. And so on Monday, our last full day in Amsterdam, we were so blessed to get a ticket to go to Anne Frank. So day four. So day four in Amsterdam started off with us finally trying one of the hot dog stands that you just see on the street. Why that was on our list to do, I can't really explain, but we became obsessed with it. Um, I was excited because I thought I wouldn't be able to try it, but they did have chicken hot dogs. So that was a bonus. After we did that, we went and we toured the Anne Frank house. So um, Anne Frank is a young girl who just kept a diary, for those who don't know, about her and her family um, and another family's experience hiding out from the German Nazis um, for a period of two years trying to avoid execution because they were Jewish. So um, you actually get to walk through the space, the secret annex, in which her and her family um, and the others, so it's a total of eight people, including herself, hid out for two years um, until they were finally discovered. So just walking through that story, seeing it from her eyes, from her dad's eyes, um, was very interesting. It was very introspective. Um, So, yeah, it was a very interesting point. There was a time in the tour where for us, um, you know, we could see people who empathized with um, the Jewish people and what they went through, which, you know, we empathize with them, too. But more so also probably because our ancestors also went through something similar. You know, we were we were captured, actually, and brought to America enslaved, killed and, and raped and so on and so forth. So it was just very interesting to see that experience through her eyes, but also to see other people and how they so readily um, empathized with Jewish people in that experience. And then to also, it was kind of like on the flip side, disheartening when people don't empathize as much with other cultures, especially with black people when they've gone through similar things. So that was our experience um, at the Anne Frank house. Editor's note, uh, Anne Frank, it was a very well done. Um, it was nice to, that they allowed you to go into the secret annex space. And as that was a book that I read in like seventh or eighth grade, it was just really cool 
I don't want to say the word cool, but it was an experience to actually be in that space that you read about. And, um, and to the later point of what Crystal was saying, um, I got upset a bit because I did see people be invisibly, um, uh, moved and emotional about the story as they should be. But it just was like, how come black people don't get the same level of humanity? when these same things happen to us um, and for a greater period of time. And I hate the struggle wars game, but it's just like, we aren't afforded that same um, empathy and sympathy. And um, it would be nice to get that as well, but definitely book your tickets to the Anne Frank um, house early. If you go to Amsterdam. So I'm sitting here in amsterdam i'm sitting outside of a gift shop i'm actually sitting in a clock that's the size of a person or bigger and you know i'm enjoying it and i just wanted to leave a little note because me and adrian were out here chit-chatting and it's just really funny sometimes people look at me double take and i feel like it's because i'm short and black and it's because i'm sitting in this fucking clock getting high but you know that's nobody's business this clog has pedals. It might take off. I, it looks like I can drive the clog. It looks like a um, like a um, bobsledding type of contraption. Oh, it's a cute little husky. Anyway, I'm high. I'm just sitting here, uh, people watching in a clog. Adrian will attach a picture so everyone can see what I mean because I'm literally sitting in a clog, getting high. Thank you. Oh, hey. Jade, um, and I wanted to check back in with you all um, from my last recording um, about not wanting to drink because I had gotten terribly drunk um, the night before I left that recording, drinking something called absence. And um, I don't know what the hell um, that stuff is. It's like it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. And so I usually drink it as, you know, in a cocktail, because y'all know, if you know me, um, I like cocktails. But we were taking shots of this, thanks to Ashley from um, Will Drink for Travel. But apparently you're not supposed to take shots of it. So long story short, um, I just was out of character afterwards. And so I was like, you know what, I'm not drinking I'm getting myself right with the Lord, and my friends were not having it. And so the next day, I was peer pressured into having a drink. And I told them that I did not want to drink, they ordered me a cocktail. Now, I do think that Crystal had good intentions because they were preparing me um, for the Red Light District. And so if you all are not familiar, there are just, like, naked women that are just, like, prostituting in the window in the red light district. And while I am not approved, um, I do often clutch my pearls. And so I think they felt like I needed to be drunk in order to, um, you know, see this. But, um, yeah, I just didn't appreciate um, being peer pressured into drinking. Long story short, we did not even go to the Red Light District that night, and so I just literally wasted a drink. Um, But when you go to Amsterdam, just be prepared to be peer pressured, okay? Thanks. Are we terrible friends because we totally peer pressured JD into drinking? (laughs) But she probably didn't even want to like be the sober one in the crew because yeah no that wasn't fun sorry boo we love you but peer pressure wins sometimes throughout these clips you've heard us mention several times the food that we had in um, Amsterdam and our last night we went to the best steakhouse in holland as our waiter david said he was bomb as fuck he talked big shit but the restaurant backed up his big shit talking 
And I don't know if it was still all of the weed, all of the liquor, all of the abstinence (laughs) or absinthe um, from the previous days. But at dinner, I made a bold revelation. And uh, here we go. Captain's Log. This is December 3rd at 10.37 p.m. Amsterdam time. Adrian said the third is going to be her husband. I have never heard her commit to marriage or wedding or husband before. So this has to be documented. I'm not quite sure if I need to send anything else for my diary today. I may, but that's really the main takeaway from the whole day of Amsterdam. Okay, and good night. (laughs) And yes, I edited out the name because y'all don't need to know my business. And he did not agree to have his full government on blast on my podcast. Okay. Um, and I actually would be interested in seeing if he listens to this one. <laughs> but yes, that was the captain's log. Apparently that was the bombshell of day four. Um, I said it, I mean it, and y'all ain't getting no invites to the wedding. Boom. <laughs> Moving on to day five. Um, and the, on day five, we actually left Amsterdam. We flew to Iceland. I've already been to Iceland, but about four girls on the trip. This is their first time there. And uh, we really went to go chase the Northern Lights. And so day five. Okay. So day five, which is our last day, we um, get to Iceland. It's pretty cold, but we, we get there. It's also turning dark. Well, it is dark at this point. Um, they only see like six hours of sunlight. So the majority of the 24, 26 hours we were there, it was dark. Um, we check in our hotel. Hotel was pretty, you know, European. Change our clothes, get layered up to, for our northern lights chase. Um, and we have dinner in our hotel, which was cool. It was good. Um, I actually think that... The breakfast the following morning before we left was better. Those eggs were bomb. I'm not sure what they put in them. And I usually don't like eggs, but they were bomb. Um, So, yeah, it was cool. I had a great Moscow meal there, um, which is one of my favorite drinks. We ate, and then we went um, to see if we could chase down the Northern Lights. The one thing that sucked is that we didn't see them. We literally saw, like, one sliver a glimmer of it. Um, And we actually got to see a pretty cool image of it through the camera lens um, of a guy that was out there with us. But it unfortunately started to snow right before we reached our destination, which made it cloudy in that area. Um, I do think it's cool that the tour company that we use, they give you like up to a year to go back and see if you can see them again for free. So I'm totally thinking about since it's a direct flight, flying back out sometime within the next year just to see the Northern Lights because even the little glimmer that I saw was like, oh, it's going to be amazing when you see it in full. All right. All right, guys, we're out here somewhere in uh, some peninsula in Iceland. We need to drop a pin. We're chasing the Northern Lights. It's cold as fuck. It's dark as fuck. We're the only six black people, I think, out of this group of like 150 people. Hell, WPS. The whitest people shit ever. It's amazing. We're cold. We better see some lights. Like you I feel like God, I feel like I Jesus, we <laughs> see lights. Like I feel like we should. We deserve. This has been a spectacular trip. Amazing. This would be the cherry on the top. Cherry yes. on the top. Yes. So please, Lord, let us see yes. the wonders of Your work. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. This first Amen. time, and let us not have to use our rebate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll check in later. <laughs> And let you know <laughs> if we saw anything in the sky. <laughs> I don't want to use my. So unfortunately, we did not see the Northern Lights in all its glory. It really looks like you know how like if you you um see a car window and it's fogged up and you take your hand and smear it trying to clear it and it kind of like wipes away the fog. Like that's what it looks like in the sky for the brief moment we were able to see a little. It just looked like someone just took their hand through the sky and in the openings you saw the green and the blues like poking out but it just was so cloudy we couldn't see it but i'm gonna see the goddamn northern lights motherfucker it was so fucking cold like in that last clip i think you can hear the cold like it was just it was just cold it was cold 
it was cold and like ashley said on my insta story we bought boots for this <laughs> which we did so on to day six today we had breakfast like i said the breakfast was bomb then we made our way to i'm um, the blue lagoon it was still dark outside. The sun did not come up until like 11 a.m. And it was cold. Um, and it was also like snowing and the wind was blowing. And we all were like, man, are we really about to do this? But once you get into the lagoon, it's such an awesome experience. You are totally warm the whole time. Um, I love the mask. I love that you get a free cocktail. The only thing I wish, if the wind wasn't blowing and the snow wasn't coming down as much, I know we would have stayed in a little longer, but it was a bomb experience. I highly recommend it. I would go back and I would want to stay at the hotel and just kind of like linger and get massages in the water and do some other things. So yeah, highly recommend it. Loved Iceland. We were like in and out. Um, we took advantage of the first class um, lounge on the way back, which started off our relaxation and our trek back home. So I would do Iceland again. I definitely would. All right. So that's it. Bye. Okay, so day six, we get to the Blue Lagoon at about nine o'clock in the morning. It is snowing outside, like blizzard-like conditions. And we stored our luggage. We walked to the building. I can't see shit in front of me. So I'm following Adrian's feet, moving fast as I don't know what. We get in, get assigned our lockers. They tell us we got to take a shower. And uh, the showers are built for caucasoids because it's a rain head that comes shooting straight the fuck out of the ceiling. Um, nobody told me my hair got drenched and uh, by then I was ready to throw the whole fucking shower door off. So we get outside and take off our robes. It is fucking freezing. This is day two of the whitest white people shit that we have done on this trip. And we go into the water. It is cold as a motherfucker until that warm water hit our feet. And then we were outside in the warm water with the snow blowing in our faces like Caucasians. I, I don't know. But it was a nice experience. I would do it all over again, uh, preferably when it's not that damn cold outside. Um, and that was the Blue Lagoon. It was snowing again when we left. And uh, yeah. That's about it. So I also forgot it was a white lady who was pretty scandalized. I conditioned my hair when I came back in because apparently the lagoon dries the fuck out of your hair and your skin. So I conditioned my hair. I washed it. And apparently when I was blow drying my wig, it was blowing back off of my face. And the white lady behind me looked a little scandalized. Sorry, I scared you, miss. Fee had quite a time with her hair this trip. <laughs> The, the 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 blue lagoon water she's drooling in it she had a little a few little moments there but this was my second time at the blue lagoon i went for the first time um sometime in 2015 and they have made some um, improvements and updates to the lagoon and to the facilities and um highly recommend the experience if you go to iceland and also, if you can have lunch at the restaurant, um, I've eaten there both times. Both times, the meals were delicious. The masks are bomb. The water is amazing. The one thing I was excited about this time is that they had private shower stalls. Like the first time we went, you had to bathe naked before you go. And um, before it was just like shower heads along the wall and you were naked and you saw a lot of bush um <laughs> so that was day six so in all that was our trip that was it like crystal said we went into the little first class lounge then we boarded our plane and took our black asses home and i am just so thankful that i have such incredible friends um who are willing to spend thousands of dollars to celebrate my birthday uh, right before the holidays in another country and who are just easy, calm, go with the flow. Let's just have a fucking good ass time. And so I just know that was a great kickoff to Booney's uh, 34th birthday. Um, by the time when you're listening to this, 
I have about maybe five more days before I turn 34. And in episode 41 um, that was released last year for my birthday, I did a kind of like what I want to get out of the year. And um, I went back and revisited that podcast this weekend. And I was thrilled to know that some of the work I put in this year, I really was able to take advantage of it and enjoy um, the life that I'm building. And so, again, I hope you enjoyed the clips uh, from our hashtag Amsterdam hose vacation. <laughs> I hope that if you do go to Amsterdam, you will enjoy all of the food, every cocktail we had. Like everything is just spectacular, okay? You will not regret it. So I really, really hope and encourage you to go to Amsterdam and to Iceland. This is my second time in Iceland. So again, season five, the Boonie Breakdown podcast, Monday, January 21st, 2019 is when that will kick off. And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts, or any app that you listen to your podcast on. Don't forget to leave a review too. You might just hear your review on the next episode. Follow us on social media. Share the episode with those you love, those you don't love, those you fucking hate. I don't make those pretty images for nothing, okay? Have a dope ass week. Thank you for listening. And remember, the ratchet in me will always honor the ratchet in you. Until next time.